Welcome back to the Flexible Mind. I'm here with my buddy Gordy. We're discussing all kinds of random shit. Yeah. We had an outline when we first started, but we haven't touched a single subject. Nothing, which is fan- fucking fantastic. Yep. Yeah. We're actually, uh, you know, it's a good discussion yeah. so far. But on that list, I actually want to talk to you about like your football career when you were in high school, because I know you did that for the whole time, right? Yeah, all four years. Yeah. And you know, I was just interested in, you know. A, how did it impact you then, you know, changing your perspectives, your time, maybe kept you out of trouble or put you in trouble by hanging out with certain people or, and then I guess in the long run too, like, has it had any impact on your life today that you feel like are positive or negative or? So, yeah, that's, um, <laughs> to say that the fact that, uh, to, this is a bit of an understatement to say that how much, like, football changed my life drastically in ways that it doesn't most people, I feel like. You know, like, normally the stories you hear about football when it makes a big impact is because of the successes that have come from it. Um, like, oh, I'm in the NFL, or oh, I went to college, got a free education. Yeah. I didn't get those typical benefits. I got very much more nuanced benefits out of it. And also some of the very severe pitfalls that came out of it, too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, to preface, I, I, we didn't really, we kind of knew each other in, in middle school, but I remember you were also, Yeah, I was actually also, <laughs> You were the kid who... I just remember, like, oh, he's the kid with the long hair who walked to DC. That was me. That was, that's pretty much my. That's how I remembered it. That's it's, we, we we went to the same school, but I was extremely overweight, super nerdy, very reclusive, um, because I grew up with a you know emotionally and eh, not not too much on my end, but a physically abusive father, a stepfather, and never really had a good solid father figure to grow on. I mean, he was an alcoholic. He never did anything. Never like took me out to go do yeah. stuff. And then so, combine that with middle so school that, and it's just like... Exactly. Combine that with the fact that I was already an overweight kid growing up and the fact that I only had a single mom doing most of the stuff. So I never got pushed into doing sports at a young age and anything like that. So I never... I was completely on a, no athletic inclination at all. Yeah. Um, whenever we, I was in Boy Scouts, whenever we go on hiking trips, I hated it. So I the only thing I remember growing up because I was so big was, oh, he's going to be a football player. Oh, he's going to be a football player. So yeah. in my head, I had already... Coming up to it, in my head, I convinced myself, well, in high school, I have to do football. Like, I literally, almost like it was my destiny. Yeah. Like, and and that's something I hated about that because I dreaded it when I first was going to it. In fact, I used to hate football because I, it was like that was the monster. I, it was almost like I was, like, if you were a girl growing up and you were forced to wed somebody, like, that was me. In my head, I'm like, no, I want intellectual pursuits. I can't I see. do this. Yeah. And so I felt like, like, this is my obligation. My family will hate me if I don't do it. And so I was like, I'm going to have to do it. Yeah. And so I got there, and the first thing before I even got into football, my mom had bought me. She asked her boss, like, oh, hey, my son doesn't know much about football. He's going to be doing it soon. What can I get him? He was like, buy him Madden. So he bought me Madden 10. <laughs> the, the, the PlayStation game. Yeah, so the PlayStation 2. The <laughs> NFL 10. Now, the 360 had already been out, but I, I, was, I had a PS2, and that was all I had. So I started playing it. And just learning it, and I, I got good at it, and I kind of had an idea how things were going to go. And then finally, f- freshman year rolls around, I go out and I start doing football. Um, the immediate benefit was that it started getting me in shape. I started learning how to exercise and yeah. lose weight, things like that. Um, you know, lifting, getting stronger. Because, I mean, to give you an idea, when I started, I could barely bench the barbell. So 45 pounds. <laughs> 45 pound and bar. Six foot five, that's, 280 yeah. pounds, that's bad. Yeah. That's really bad. And so it put me into a, a much better shape where I'm, you know, a, I'm a filled out adult who can do things. Like I, that would have been an inhibiting issue if I got into the adult world and I'm going into the kitchen, I can barely lift up a bag of rice. Like <laughs> yeah. that's, that was, and so that, from a small structure, that, that gave me that structure as well as an, uh, a certain name that you, I'm sure you were well aware of uh, with the last name. Oh, I'll say the first name, Josh. Oh yeah. We'll just leave it there. Yeah, I'll get Josh. <laughs> that negative influence came into my life, got me on a bad path. Of yeah. I was skipping school to go do less than legal activities. We were, you know, I was skipping in class. In fact, I was with him when they got caught in the auditorium. No way. In fact, I'm par- okay. I'm part of the reason they got caught, but it wasn't me. Um, See, I was I was part of the group that found it. Me and Kyle. Who oh yeah, the the, the past. The, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, but yeah, we were in we were in drama, and every afternoon, like we'd sneak up there and just hang out, not do anything bad. But then, and when Kyle was the one who showed, he showed it to Josh, and uh, I think it went to Kitty and CJ. Yeah, they, Marshall. 
and Marshall. He's one showed it to them, so then they kind of brought me along. We were up there on um, the specific day in April that tends to be that national holiday for that activity, for said activity. Um, I, have, I have no idea what you're talking about. So Gordon. we were up there, and what happened was because I was the new guy, I contributed the least amount of money in of the pool. They're like, okay. <laughs> they're like, Gordy, you get to go buy us lunch on lunch. So we've been sneaking, we've been skipping up there since first period. Oh yeah, I remember hearing about. And this. so I come down. Um, another person who. That's a whole other story. Uh, Tyler A. Okay. So not, not the one I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he had... He was at the time actively against it. Much different now. To, but, uh, <laughs> We've all grown up. Well, no, he, he's <laughs> one of the examples of people who he let it ruin his life. Yeah. Um, he now lives on some guy's couch in North Carolina making $9 an hour. Because, Very nice. And it, was all, and it was all directly because of that. Um, Damn. Yeah. He threw a lot of... We're talking about weed. Yeah. <laughs> he threw a lot of relationships out, but aside from that, he sees it. And he's like, "Don't go back up there. You don't want to go up there." He's like, "It's just stupid." I'm like, "No, whatever. Like, go back up there." As I'm coming back, the door is locked to the auditorium now because because when I first I forgot when I first was leaving, I was trying to leave, and all of a sudden I hear like a cough in the auditorium. I'm like, "Oh shit, someone's here." Uh oh. The entire auditorium was filled with testing. It had started because we went in first period. It started in oh second and was going through God, the end of class. No. So I had to sneak out. And as I'm coming back, doors locked. I'm sitting there trying to get in. And sure enough, my football coach, uh, Bill Gerke, comes up. He's like, hey, what are, you, what are you doing here? What are you? And so he, what happened was my buddy Tyler went to go tip, tipped off the administration. He was there wondering when I was here. He found my backpack, all this. And so. I didn't know this at the time, so look, I smooth talked my way out of it. Oh my. Which that is a whole story that I could go in. It's a very I've told this story, and I'm like, that's fucking insane. How yeah. <laughs> I narrowly avoided this. Later that day, they get arrested, go to jail. But it was at that point that I that scare the fact that that was my coach who was looking me in the face. The fact that I had already been missing practice. I at one point took money from my physical to go buy, get some stuff. Yeah, get yeah. some stuff. And so, like, I had been doing a lot of things, like lying, skipping class, skipping uh, practice. And so, having that shock in my face kind of was like, hold on, you need to get your priorities straight, get back yeah. to football. So, football was able to kind of be there as, like, because if that had not been there, if I had just been missing after school, the only thing I would have been skipping is hanging out with friends at a friend's house, which I effectively was still doing. Yeah. So, in my head, I know that I would have justified it much more. To the point where I would have let it consume. So it kind of created like this. Uh, it created level the structure. Of, yeah, it, it created the, an accountability in myself. Exactly. It was more than just myself and my parents I had to report to. Yeah, you have a team and exactly. And, I had you know, teammates, I had friends, I had yeah. coaches. Like everything about that kind of forced my after school activities to be structured and you know accounted for. Yeah. Because otherwise, all I had to do was just be home before five o'clock, or just be at the school. You know, if my friends would buy just walk like, oh hey, I was hanging out at school. Can you come pick me up? Like, I would have been able to, I know I would have been able to talk my way out of yeah. it. Football, I couldn't have. Because all it takes is the coach to say, hey, Gordy's missed the last, you know, two weeks of practice that he quit. And then I'm in deep shit. Yeah. So, it gave me that structure. It kept me out of trouble. It, you know, it grew me as a person. Uh, the side effects would be that it absolutely destroyed my body. Yeah, I, I would um, think so. Especially a guy at your size, they're gonna well, put you on the line or something. Well, thing, I was on offensive line, and it was, and it's partially my fault. I'm not gonna say like, oh, this football just killed me, but there's the mentality of everything is, oh, you're you're hurt, not injured. Oh, play through it, play through it, um, and that's exactly what happened to me. I would do. It was sophomore year. I started having problems with my leg, with my knee, and with my back, and I was like. You're being a baby, quit being a pussy. This is just what you get because a year or two. Eh? Well, because yeah, because I was like, oh, you're just, you're just. It's because everyone else has been doing this a long time. You're not used to. It. You're a baby. You're just this fat yeah. kid who is finally playing football. This is what comes with it. Little did I know, I actually partially tore my MCL, and I um, Damn. and I had a stress fracture in my back. So it kept getting worse. It kept getting worse. My back never got better because I kept re-injuring it. Yeah. Uh, and then my knee never healed properly because I was actively playing a con a collision sport with the yeah. knee. Yeah, collision sport. Yeah, it's not a con... con basketball is a contact sport. Hockey, football are collision sports. Yeah, because like, the intention is to smash your exactly, body. You're, you're, exactly. You're, you're deliberately trying to hit these people, not just, oh, I contact. Oops. No, it's like I'm trying to murder you. Yeah. They're actually people trying to injure other people in that sport. So I'm playing a collision sport with a bad knee that normally puts people out for a season. And the other thing and is... I fucked up back. And, boy, and a bad back. And I won't... I'm not going to pull my foot out, but I also have... Uh, 
not not bunions, kind of bunions or something that form. My foot structures, I have my bone, my big toe bone is bigger than it should be, so it bulges out. Okay. And so at some point, I started getting tendonitis, where just my tendons were inflamed. Yeah. Well, because the structure of my foot, they became permanent. My foot so it, it, the bone is so pressed against the skin that it never alleviates pressure. So I still Damn. to this day have permanent tendonitis. Um, my back is now herniated. I have a herniated disc in my back. Yeah. Because of the, my muscles constantly struggling to keep up because of it picking up the slack for my exact stress fracture. And now I have arthritis in both my knees because after my MCL didn't heal properly, A, it shifts around. And I kept telling myself I'm fine, joined wrestling, did wrestling for two years, started lifting outside of high school. And because of that, my left knee went so bad, I started leaning on my right knee. That got arthritis just due to the overuse. Then because my right knee started going bad, I went back to my left knee and now both have arthritis. So you're fucked. So yeah, I mean, I have the body of a, <laughs> I have body of a 45-year-old. Essentially, I finally have health insurance through my my job but at this point now i'm going to have to go and i just got this and i, I my cards came in today so i'm gonna walk into the doctor and be like we're, we're <laughs> i'm going, ready we're going six million dollar man on this just rebuild because <laughs> yeah. they're gonna go through their potentially i'm not gonna say for sure cortisone shot in the back to help with the disc yeah just because my muscles aren't strong enough to where i need to rebuild those up first then i can worry about my back um they need to re-tear my mcl and then attach it properly so it doesn't move jesus um then they need to, I mean, the knee, arthritis is kind of a thing. You just kind of have to deal with it. They're yeah. going to do rehab treatments, anti-inflammatory, things like that. But then with my feet, they have to open my foot up, pull out my big bone toe, shave it down, and then reattach it. Delicious. Yeah. So, now, <laughs> needless to say, that deductible is going to hit cap real fucking quick. Yeah. You're going to so, have some... Uh... So, I'm, that's why I'm just like, I've been putting it off for six years now, but I'm just going to walk and be like, all right, doc, get ready. You're making your paycheck today. Yeah. Holy shit, man. So, but yeah. So, and in the long run, do you think it was good or bad? Um, I would say that it, I, if I could go back and start again, I would still do football, uh, especially knowing how much my mentality changed as a person from that. Uh, on top of the fact that I would just know, I, I wish I had started earlier, only because then I would have learned much more of what is okay, what isn't in terms of the pain I'm feeling. Yeah. I would have, because realistically, there is a chance that had I not pushed myself through those injuries and inevitably played worse because of it, that you I would have healed or something. Up. Yeah. And if not, I would have known my limitations earlier. I would have known, what, okay, my body is taking too much. I need to step back. Yeah. And I would have been able to put myself in a better position somewhere else. Whether yeah, it was yeah. like junior year, say my knee's not getting better, or I do tear my MCL, go get another job, save up some money, have a you know have money for school coming out of high school. I just know that having gone back and started younger and knowing what was what was okay and what wasn't, yeah, would have put me in a better position to be more equipped with knowledge of what I should and shouldn't be doing. You know, it's almost like if you you go your whole life being abused, you don't know it. Exactly, you can't get out of that situation where if you if you kind of be like, okay, I know that I I'm worth more than this, I'm going to stop. I would have, you would have been able to back out and get out of the yeah. same situation, like in a relationship, same thing here. If I had known that essentially I was abusing myself playing this sport, I would have eventually had the odd sense to be like, exactly. I need to take a step back. So I don't regret it. Um, I just wish I had been more aware of what I was doing to myself. Yeah, it's, it's when you make that point, it, it reminds me of uh, one of the Joe Rogan podcasts. He was talking about, um, I forget which MMA fighter he was talking about, but he was like in the middle of a fight and he had gotten hit so many times in the head that he had to just step back for a second and realize something's fucked up with me. Like, mm -hmm. And that came from his knowledge and awareness of his body through training like that mm -hmm. to where you know, you know the difference between hurt and injured. But if you go in like that with all these expectations and pressures on you like you did with football, you, know, you don't really see the line between hurt and injured and you always think it's just hurt. So you push through it for the team yep. and then you get fucked up. And then you deal with what you're dealing with now. Well, and because I have an extremely high pain tolerance, so to me it wasn't like a like my knee hurt, but I was like I can still walk, so I'm not fucking hurt. And you're a big dude, so I mean, like when you when you're around a, when, you're, when you're around the guys, exactly, and the you get hurt, exactly the test strongest is like, like bro, and that's the thing. Fucking push lot, through it, boy. A lot of that. There was a it's lot like, of points where I was like, no, this is not okay. And they're like, oh, could be a pussy. Get like, let's go. Get, yeah. Like, come on, like let's keep running, keep running, going to the drill. I took a long time for me for me to finally be like, no. Is too much. Yeah, I need to stop. And it wasn't until like my senior year 
when there's a one where I almost blacked out because of how like I was about to pass out from like a heat exhaustion. Yeah. And I was like, no, coach. Like, and, he, and of course, I got a lot of shit for it. He, I mean, he treated me like crap for it. But I paid for it for the next week, few weeks. But I, in my head, I'm like, no, I know. As yeah, much yeah. as I hate it, I made the right decision because yeah. he would have been way – he would have been fucked if I had blacked out and went to the hospital. He would have been fired. Yeah, and I, 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 I empathize with that whole situation because, you know, I was doing ROTC in high school and I was really into it. Um, and we went to Paris Island um, for a couple of days just to see what it's like and get yelled at by drill instructors. And there was a point we were doing like what, – what, it's called a crucible mm-hmm. and it's – um, I want to say it's two or three days of just like nonstop training and they like go through scenarios and it's like your final test to become a Marine. And we were doing various little scenarios they had. And one of them was I was inside this t- like giant black tube and it's like fucking 100 degrees outside. And we had to move like 35 pound ammo crates, two of them, across these beams that we had to like set ourselves. So it was like a 10 foot beam and we had to like hold it from one end and place it on a plank in the center of like this minefield Mm -hmm. and then carry the the ammo across move the beam over to finish all the way you had to get everybody and the ammo across this minefield and i was working so hard to keep the team together and coordinated and working you know busting ass that towards the end i just couldn't feel anything my face my lips my fingers everything was just going numb and i knew i was highly dehydrated but I'm at Paris Island, surrounded by insane drill instructors who will eat you for no reason. Yep. And so I'm going to this what they call a water buffalo, which is like a giant tanker of water. And literally as I get to the spigot to fill my bottle, mm-hmm. pss, just empty. And I'm sitting here like, I'm going to die of heat exhaustion in boot camp. I'm not even getting paid to do any of this. Yeah. What the fuck's going on? And I just had to, you know, the same thing, you know, what you were saying is you have to just stop and say, no, this, I'm, I'm actually fucked up and I can't carry on. I need to sit down and, and you know, take yep. care of this issue. Fuck how you feel about it. Yep. And I know I'm glad I did. Same thing. I'm sure you were too. Like you can do some extensive damage. It's just unfortunate that it went so long for you. Cause. Well, and that's, and yeah, it's it because, and because of my pain tolerance, because these are in things like where I feel like I'm going to die. It's just because I, 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 you don't realize that. Oh, so what? I played on a hurt, like a hurt back. Whatever, it'll get better. I'll have the off season. It's like no, some, there's a, will be a point where you've crossed the threshold. And now it's lifelong issues. Yeah, chronic. yeah. Um, and so that's that. I crossed that line. Yeah, about so, to say it seems so. And so I mean, it's it's. I still say in the end, it's a net gain because if I look about where I'm at now, like yeah, this sucks that my back is bad, and, you know. But at the same time, I'm still. If I had stayed where I was in middle school and become the person I was on the path to be with how bad my body is I'm still would have been capable of doing everything then as I am now so like all I was doing was sitting at home playing video games on the computer talking to people yeah doing nothing eating like shit nothing good yeah I can do that now with a bad back and <laughs> yeah I need you know, a slightly more comfortable chair but I can still do that now <laughs> yeah so, so, so like, why fucking... but at the same time if, if me that would have had been that path wanted to go to the gym and work out, fuck no. Not a chance in hell. No, I a, wouldn't have the courage. B, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah. Whereas now, even in my, my bad back and bad knees, I can still go in there if I really wanted to and do a bench press just to do it. Yeah. I, you know, if, or if someone wants me to help them move something. Like this weekend, tomorrow, I'm helping my sister put in, uh, move a new dryer from her friend's house into a, her current house. Yeah. I can do that. I wouldn't be able to do that back then. Yeah. So... While I obviously I go through a lot more pain, my back always hurts, my feet always hurts. These are things that I can. I, it's my cross to carry. I put myself in that situation. I'm okay with it. This man is full of good fucking quotes. <laughs> full of good fucking quotes, man. It's ridiculous. It's and my so, cross to carry. I like. And that. so it's just that I know, I, and it's it's kind of a reminder. I now know what my limitation is. If I ever get to those points, I'm not afraid to say no. So all, I've worked out since then. Yeah. And people are like, oh, come on. And I'm like, no. Like, that's it. Like, I'm, I'm drawing the line here. Mm-hmm. My back is bad. My knees are bad. I don't care if you don't fucking believe me. I don't need your validation. I already went through that once. I'm done. Yeah, and that kind of goes to, like, a, a, the point of there's a difference between training and training right. You know, and, and knowing your limitations and not pushing it too far because that's when you get to injuries and things like that. I mean, you see that all the time with MMA fighters where they just train so hard constantly and then they push themselves too far and now they're fucking themselves up. Mm-hmm. And you just can't do that. But to transition a little bit to pivot, you said you were doing wrestling and I had totally forgotten about that. Mm-hmm. 
do you think um, – well, I guess to back it up a little bit, Mr. Lesher, he's been doing at our school the whole jujitsu thing, mm-hmm. and I thought that's fucking dope. Um, I've actually hit him up, asked him about joining and getting involved with all that. But with wrestling, how did it impact your perspective, I guess, and like with the injuries, it must have been – Harder or yes, and so th- this is where my real regret comes from. I wish I had done wrestling instead of football, mm. because I I love football. I love the sport of football. I could literally talk. I could give you a whole nother series of podcasts where I'm on every single day talking about the NFL. <laughs> awesome. But a lot of I I became such a better person from being in wrestling. Because in football, I was always behind the curve because I had started so late. Mm-hmm. I had always had issues. I had dealing you know, with people better than me who, you know, bullying, I guess you could even call it, I, you know, lack of success. And the fact that there was, you know, it was, despite it's a one-on-one, I literally was grouped into it. Like, you know, if you're a wide receiver, you can be an individual wide receiver. You're a quarterback, you're an individual. Your offensive line, you're a whole. Yeah. So you don't ever get that individual ideal of success. Yeah. To carry, you know, other, other than you dominating one other person right then, but that doesn't happen that often. Yeah. Because you're, like, the best. So in my situation, all I really got was negative feedback. It was either, oh, you fucked up or yeah. nothing at all. Yeah. Wrestling, on the other hand, you, one other person into that match. One person wins, so it pushes you to drive yourself in a much more in a mental way that yeah. is not existent with football. The other thing is, I thought I was in shape when I was in football. My sophomore year, before I was injured, I was playing both sides. Uh, when I was on the junior varsity team, I was I literally would just it would be like, oh, we do an interception, I'll stand here. I'm, I'm on defense. Oh, oh, we're punting, I'm, I'll stand here. I'm, True. I'm on line. So I just didn't move other than a kickoff, and that was it. Yeah. So. I was constantly on the field pushing myself and I thought I was in great shape. Then I went to go try wrestling. One match of wrestling is harder than an entire game playing both sides of football. Damn. And you will do five matches in one day for wrestling. Holy shit. The levels I got pushed to were insane. And I know it wasn't just me because we had other... There were other guys... Uh, David, I don't even... Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, super strong guy, absolutely physically gifted in terms of strength, was a great football player, one of the best defensive players we had. He comes out to football, and I kicked his ass up and down that mat. He nice. couldn't keep up. And it was because I'm like, you think you're in shape, but until you're you not. Do this, yeah. Until you do this. <laughs> yeah. You can't go run three and a half miles to warm up for practice. Yeah. We can. And so it put me in a much more, I built my confidence to a level that was not before. Yeah. And I'm mad that I started earlier only because... I saw the the jump I took from when I first started wrestling my junior year to when I got the senior year, even despite being injured, was so huge because of wrestling. Yeah. That now I advocate that all everyone needs to do wrestling. If you play football, you're doing yourself a disservice not doing wrestling because yeah. of how much better of a competitor, an athlete, you know, in a person you become. Yeah. Because there's no all the accountability is on you. When you're in that match and you're tired, it's easy in football to be like, I'm taking this playoff. So doesn't that kind of like parallel the idea we spoke about earlier with this whole, um, you know, the need to have individual uh, drive? It's for this one. It's it's more about individual recognition. So when you're a part of that offensive line, you're typically just getting negative feedback. It's like you didn't drive hard enough or you didn't defend good enough. But then when you're wrestling, you're getting that that level of individual satisfaction. So it drives you more because you're being well, and because there's I mean, and this especially I mean. No one likes to admit that they messed up. No one likes to be wrong. So in football, you can always find an excuse. Oh, well, you know, so-and-so missed this block. Or, oh, so-and-so. Very rarely are you ever like, damn, I fucked up. Yeah, but when you're on the mat, when you get your ass kicked. Well, the thing, you, 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 <laughs> lose, you lose and you you have to accept it. There's, yeah. you, there's no excuses yeah. you can make. Because you fucked so up. So you get better. You really learn from your losses in wrestling compared to football. Yeah. And so... It just... it, it And the, my how my career went with wrestling was so... Different, like my I started my JV year with undefeated in JV. Now that's, that's wow. That sounds good. Not really realistically, you have a lot of fat sacks of shit who don't do anything, just join wrestling to join it. So I mean, I literally was just throwing like butter balls on the mat for half the matches, <laughs> um, like to the point where you don't. They're just like eh, when they hit the ground. Pussies. So, so that, that <laughs> built my ego up so much. Yeah. I'm like, oh fuck yeah, I'm a football player now. I'm kicking ass in wrestling, and then I did my first. My first tournament for varsity my senior year went 0 and 5, got my shit rocked. Damn. Because I was out of shape because I had just been doing football and football doesn't put you in shape for, they put you, they put you in shape for collision, not for cardio. Yeah. And so 
I was out of shape, got my ass kicked, and I'm like, that's no, like, there we go, boom, humbled again. And so I just had this roller coaster ride, went up, I was at the top of the world, and then brought back down, like, you're the little fish at the big pond, yeah. that guy, step it up. And got significantly better to the point where my coach was just like, How, Gordy, what the fuck have you been doing? Like, fucking beating people's well, asses. <laughs> like, I went from 0 and 5, and he, I remember seeing him, he would do, Coach Cone. All okay. the time. And I just remember after that, the first five losses, because we, we, a bunch of people were doing okay, but all the football players were just getting their asses kicked because of how out of shape they were. And he just, I just remember seeing him just doing this during my match when I got pinned in like two minutes. And he was just like, fuck. Like, fucking great. He's out of shape. Oh, I thought and he, he was getting all hyped up because the previous heavyweight was super fucking good. He was one match away from States. Wow. And so he was just like, nice. this is what I have my senior year. And I'm like, I'm not. No, <laughs> this is not happening. So I guess just to wrap up the segment real fast, because we've uh, hit about 25 minutes. Um, it sounds like from, from your experiences between football and wrestling that football was, was good, but wrestling seemed to not only improve your strength, but also your your confidence, your, your mental uh, endurance, things like that. And you were able to become, it seems, at least from your story, that wrestling was far more beneficial than yeah. being in football. Yeah, and uh, I won't ramble. The oh, right <laughs> wrestling was from the... I, I love football more than anything. Football was fun in terms of the getting into the passion. I'm glad I found that passion, but wrestling was just... Everything was different for me. It, rest, I, I, wrestling did more for me than football ever mm-hmm. did. I just love football so much that I hate to say that. That's really what True. it is. True, yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, Gordy. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for chatting, coming through. I appreciate it. And we'll have to do this again here soon. Absolutely. I got to keep talking. Awesome. Yeah. Have a great day.